Oh, brother. A very fancy intro made by our friend Justin, but I recommend you stick around until the end because I think okay. the outro is even uh, even better. Also better, the <laughs> furnace is turning on because, you know. Well, it could be worse. It could never turn on, and then you'd have a real problem. Yes. That see is... how I always say the bright side of things? Yeah, that's very unusual. What did you drink this morning? <laughs> Just espresso. You know, the usual. <laughs> I had something else I was going to tell you, and I now forgot. I think it was don't buy anything on Black Friday, but that doesn't really ring a bell. Yeah, what's going on with that? I've seen a lot of advice, things you shouldn't buy this Black Friday. Yeah, well, black the Black and Black Friday this year is a little slightly different meaning. Like it's, hey, hey, hey. Yeah. You just, if you're thinking about standing in line at Walmart for that TV, maybe <laughs> don't. Maybe <laughs> Right. Maybe don't. Maybe. Well, I feel like, hasn't most shopping already gone online? I mean... I feel like Black... I, I vaguely recall Home Depot sending out an email like November 1st, like Black Friday starts today. I'm like, well, that's just called a sale. But you know yeah, what? You do. Yeah, you. Yeah. Like, yeah, but it's... Whatever. That's better for everybody, isn't it? Yeah. I guess. I used to occasionally go out on Black Friday midnight. Like, it's just kind of a blood sport. It's you know? <laughs> I didn't really need to buy anything. It was just entertaining. All right, wallet, keys, brass knuckles, we're good. We're well, good. for example, so you know what it's like is like, in other words, you go to a store at the time when it's flooded with people, and I hate crowds. Mm -hmm. I don't like to shop, but because I don't have anything to buy, it takes on kind of a different, uh, you know, feel. Mm -hmm. And uh, the thing I equated to is uh, years and years ago, I, I went to the, I drove into the airport to pick up somebody. And, uh, you know, I got there a little early and, I had a little time to kill, so I'm kind of hanging out. You know, I had a cup of coffee or something, and I'm like, mm -hmm. you know, the airport is actually a pretty pleasant place. If you're not freaking out because you're on a schedule and you don't want to miss oh, a yeah. plane, you have to yeah. go through security, you know. Like it's, you know, if you're not there for the the reason most people are there, I mean, it can be entertaining. Yeah. I mean, it's basically just a glorified mall with um, built-in <laughs> yes, transportation. With, with giant things flying away from it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like rather than mom and dad dropping yeah. you off at the mall, you got this giant metal tin can that will take you yeah, to another mall. Like, uh, yeah, what are, what are the restaurant choices? What are the shopping choices? Yeah, yeah. there's some duty-free alcohol depending on where you are. I mean, <laughs> yeah. it's... Yeah, I get, yeah maybe, it's maybe... It's all about seeing the bright side, Brian, you know? Maybe maybe one day soon we'll be um, back on those whirly birds. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. I talked to Gary Petty yesterday. Oh, did you? And he has... Uh, he, him and his family and his friend Dave, who I think you met, um, all have plans to come to Florida in May. Bold. And I was thinking... From the UK, this is for people yeah. who don't, I should say. Um, and I was like, maybe. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you know, like, maybe. how do you get to the front of the line? Like, what's the? <laughs> well, you can buy tickets now cheap. For no, 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 no. I mean, like, <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, like, that's the other thing he told me. He said he expects the UK to be fully inoculated or whatever by, I think he said March. Because the trick on international is going to be the relationship that two different countries have yes. and they're, how they're doing, respectively. Mm -hmm. So, it, like, the U.S. might let in people from the UK by then. Yeah. But would you want to come here? I mean, would you want to, and then go to Florida? No offense, Florida, but seriously. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, even you must yeah, know. I mean, it's, <laughs> you know, I mean, really? Like, yeah. Like if, yeah. yeah. Sorry. <laughs> maybe, sorry. maybe try like a New York or something. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Like maybe a Seattle. I, they're welcome to come to Pennsylvania. Yeah. We don't have, we have a, we have a, uh, a Dorney Park right down the road. My daughter used to work there. It's like Disney. Small. Like, like Disney. Did you know that there's a Legoland, I think, by the way, somewhere? Yeah, like, there is. So we looked at it many, many years ago. Mm -hmm. And like we priced it all out. And they're like, right. wait, we can go to Disney for this. And then we just went to Disney. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's, I think, you know, sometimes if it's local enough, you could drive there and get there easily and yeah. whatever. You know, like maybe. But yeah, we've done, when I was kids, we did stuff like uh, we had uh, local parks like Lincoln Park up in. Uh, also a good band. What's that? Also a good band, but not not the same. Yeah. <laughs> not the same Lincoln, but really different park. Um, yeah. But like you know, we've been to like Knott's Berry Farm, right? Or you go to mm -hmm. like the side places, like obviously SeaWorld and Universal Studios and blah blah blah. Like I, at some point, you just want to try something different. Yeah. But Knott's Berry Farm is the RC Cola of parks. It's not RC even the Burger Cola. King. It's like <laughs> it's not like. The Burger King to Disney's McDonald's. It's like uh, Bob's Big Boy or, <laughs> you know, like some kind of weird, I don't know, White Castle. Yeah. Something, I don't know. 
Yeah, there was something of relevance that I was going to bring up, and I just, for the life of me... <laughs> completely destroyed it from your brain. Yeah, you, you've extracted all the hope and joy and now the knowledge, too. Um, okay. Like, was it related to the Xbox stuff with Phil Spencer? Uh, maybe some of that, that it's going to be coming to your TV, which he did announce. He did an interview yesterday uh, where he said, hey, we're going to have apps on, on TVs, I think, within 12 months. And like when it's coming from the head of the Xbox org, when he says, I think it's going to happen in 12 months, yeah, it's going to happen. People was just assigned to make sure that what he said just ha you know, <laughs> happens yeah. now. You need um, that, that wiggle room. Here's the thing. I, I, we've talked about this a lot. We, mm -hmm. We've always known, and sometimes I say known like, you know, like it's obvious, but um, obviously Xbox uh, game streaming, right, is the name of this, yeah. is coming to, I always want to say cloud streaming. Anyway, Xbox game streaming is coming to console. It's coming to PC and Mac or whatever, web, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and I said this, I, and we all said this. I mean, I'm not like a genius, but I mean, obviously it should come to smart TVs. It should go to whatever screen you have, you know. But the interesting thing about this guy's comment is he didn't say anything about all the obvious stuff. He actually just said TVs. Yeah. Right? Uh, oh, and by the way, related to this, if we haven't talked about this, uh, last Friday someone asked me, they said, hey, I use Xbox Remote Play on my Xbox One, and I, I remote play to a, I think it was a Surface Pro 7, doesn't really mm -hmm. matter, but it was a Windows computer. And um, I got an Xbox Series X or S, doesn't matter, and uh, that option's not available, like it won't work. Mm -hmm. And uh, Oh, because we talked, oh, we, actually we did talk about this, I'm sorry. So yeah, I... I yeah, yes, I'm sorry. You, don't I, even I, remember. You, you actually provided a crucial bit of information, Brad. Let me tell you how that's <laughs> going to work out. No, the way, but the way I bring the, the reason I bring that up, I'm sorry. Yep. Regardless of the fact we already talked about it, is that to me is tied into the same kind of thing. It's like this season. I think what they're trying to do is just focus on the basics. They're launching two consoles. It's mm -hmm. unprecedented. It's a big deal, and I don't think they want this other stuff to overshadow that. So um, I, I, it's inconceivable to me that they don't have these clients available both for cloud streaming, sorry, game streaming, and uh, remote play. I think these are related, and I think they're going to be everywhere. I yep. think both of them basically will be everywhere. So, yeah, it's, it's weird because I just started writing a series on um, game streaming services. Microsoft's, to me, has, is kind of the best, and it has the biggest potential, and yet it is of the four big ones, so to speak, it has the smallest client support list of all of them by far. Mm -hmm. It only works on Android right now if you have, you know, yep. uh, Xbox. The other uh, really interesting thing that came out of that interview mm -hmm. was he talked about the demographic of people who buy consoles. And he said a really, he said something that was like, well, that's really obvious. And he said, uh, the average age of the demographic that buys console every year advances by one year. And I was like, well, yeah, everybody gets older one year. But what he was that's, really saying is that no younger people yeah. in volume are actually buying consoles. And that it's the, the same people too moving forward, right? They get yep. comfortable with a console. So yep. we kind of talked about this a little bit too. I went on this long story about mouse and keyboard support and mm -hmm. PC games and making the transition and all that stuff. You know, those transitions are actually kind of difficult. So keyboard to keyboard and mouse, hard, very hard. Keyboard and mouse from on a PC to a console, uh, to a game controller, very hard. But I think once you reach that point, and it's it's literally like you're, you're really, um, from a technical sp skill perspective, you're kind of going downhill there. But you get comfortable with that kind of mm -hmm. thing. And I think the thing that's interesting about game, one of the things that's interesting about uh, cloud streaming is you can, you're you using a controller now, <laughs> you know? So we, we're, we're used to this. And I feel like game streaming services will be a super setup, but will basically replace the console because why would you need a standalone box for this when it will work anywhere, you know? Well, the, the interesting thing about this too is based on his comments, he, they already know like effectively how many consoles they can sell because the number yeah. hasn't really yeah. changed. So it's a finite amount. They know that Sony's probably going to sell X. They're hopefully going to sell Y, uh, which right. is why they're pushing Game Pass so hard because in the interview, and he's mentioned it multiple times, that mobile has billions of users. Yes, uh, right. Uh, and they will sell good. tens of millions, at least for a while, of consoles. And like the opportunity is just so rich on that other side. And that's right. why they're pushing so aggressively that way. When you think about the volume, I mean, and I should say too, Phil Spencer slash Xbox has discussed the, the opportunity in gaming. It's uh, billions of dollars, obviously, but also billions of users, most of whom, yes, will be on mobile, you know. But when you look at these markets, I mean, mobile as a device market is humongous, billion, billions of units per year. Uh, PCs and tablets are, you know, hundreds of millions, um, low hundreds of millions. 
And then um, game consoles are tens of millions, mm-hmm. right? I mean, the PlayStation 4 over seven years did sell over 100 million units. Uh, previous gen, we, we don't know on Xbox, but uh, you know, it's probably 50 to 60, somewhere in there, whatever it is. Um, when you look at the previous gen, it was uh, almost 90 million units for each platform. Um, that's the size. <laughs> I mean, that's you can mix and match however you want. And Nintendo's the outlier. Obviously, they have they kind of targeted a different audience, but uh, it's not a very big audience when you think about it. Xbox plus PlayStation mm-hmm. over the course of an entire lifetime of consoles will sell as many units as PCs did in one year. And PCs are, are, them then are dwarfed by a factor of ten ish by mobile. You know, yeah. it's not the future. Yep. The other interesting thing that came out late last night is uh, Zach, and he beat me to this because I had been hearing this too, <laughs> is Android apps on Windows is still very much a likely possibility. It might be happening next year if Microsoft pushes through with it. And so, In what, what form? What does that mean? Like literally running Android apps on Windows, not remotely, not... Okay. Mm-hmm. If you think I about it, that was a great idea. Yeah, I, uh, you think about it in perspective of what Apple's doing. Microsoft can't just sit there and do nothing because this is going to become a very hot topic of to say, "Hey, just go to the App Store and get your mobile app on your PC." And that works on Apple. Why can't I do it on my Windows PC? Well, yeah, I, I mean, uh, Google struggled with getting Android apps on uh, Chromebook. Mm-hmm. You know, it's there. Uh, it's interesting to me that for all of the apparent successes of the M1. The one thing even the most Apple-y of reviewers kind of agreed on was like, actually, the iPhone, iPad app stuff is not very good. <laughs> yeah, know? because they refuse to put a touch screen on their computers, which is... That's, yeah, yeah. Well, but, you know, most people who access Android apps in a Chromebook are not using touch either, probably. Um, or at least many of them aren't. And so, you know, the developer has to do something in mm-hmm. most cases to make sure it kind of works with mouse, keyboard. And when that doesn't appear, it, those apps don't work, you know work very well. And I think that's I think that's probably a big part of what we're seeing with iOS apps. You know. Yeah. So just be on the lookout; that might happen. Um, may not, but it's you know. Microsoft. If it does happen, by the way, one thing I do have information about is just you know the team that did the original Android implementation, which was what was that Project Astoria? Yes, I think. I so. think um, that team was disbanded years ago. Mm-hmm. I mean, years ago. So. There's no one left. Like those people all went to different parts of the company, some within the Windows org maybe, but just wherever. They all ended up somewhere. Um, so if they're jump starting that again, I don't know if they get the gang back together or if it's a new effort, you know, but yep. it's, it's, they would essentially, I don't think they're going to dust, well, maybe they would. I don't know. I was going to say, I don't think they're going to dust off the code, but uh, maybe they will. <laughs> I don't know. We will find out. It's uh, I think it's one of the things they got to ride the lightning at this point because they can either ignore the situation and just do nothing, which is what they've done for I don't know how many of years, and you can see a whole lot's changed in Windows. And, uh, uh, universal Windows apps. I mean, come on, this doesn't it solve the something? Oh, oh that was I... the wrong one. No, oh. there it is. <laughs> oh, what's this? <laughs> oh my god. Oh, that's amazing. Thank you, Justin. I like that you're the one wearing the dress. So we got I didn't even notice that. 